Hi guys, this is a reading and writing extension that I'm going to be doing uh, for the first grade classes. This is a Magic School Bus story. It is called Magic School Bus Gets Cold Feet. It is a scholastic book. Uh, let's see. It's from a TV show originally, so the books um, are an adaptation, which means they were taken from the cartoon TV show and turned into a book. Um, they were done by Tracy West and the illustrator is Art Ruiz. Now again this is called Magic School Bus Gets Cold Feet. At the end of this I will ask a couple questions. There will be writing extension uh, that goes along with this. <clears throat> when you're in Miss Frizzle's class things never happen the way they're supposed to. Like the other day when Liz the class lizard was missing, we tore up the whole classroom, but we couldn't find her anywhere. Even her habitat was missing. Maybe she moved to another classroom? Liz would never leave us. We were all about to give up hope when Miss Frizzle blew into the room. She was riding a giant alligator balloon that had sprung a leak. Miss Frizzle, Liz is missing, Phoebe cried. Oh, I know, Miss Frizzle said and so is the air from my alligator. The class was puzzled. Miss Frizzle didn't seem worried about Liz at all. Miss Frizzle sounds so unconcerned. Cold-blooded is more like it. Wanda didn't notice. She was busy looking for clues. I found a note. It's written in lizard, Wanda cried. Can you read it, Miss Frizzle? Let's see, Miss Frizzle said. Claw polish, scale moisturizer, fang paste. That sounds like a packing list, uh, Tim cried. Then Liz did move out. Arnold found another clue, a page torn out of a magazine. It showed a picture of a big white building. I bet this is where she went, Arnold said. The address is right here. To the bus! Is a rescue mission the same as a field trip? The place where Liz moved is called Herp Ha, Arnold said. Wanda shook her head. The rest of Ha is torn off, she said. It's not Herp Ha, it's Herp something else. Okay, but what's a Herp, Ralphie asked. Miss Frizzle smiled. Good question, Ralphie. Quite simply, a Herp is a reptile. And Liz is a lizard, which makes her a reptile, Keisha said. That still doesn't explain why Liz would pack up and leave us, Wanda said. She could be in danger. We have to rescue her. Wanda tried. Skip the page, sorry. The bus pulled up to the address. Wanda read the sign in front of the building. Herp Haven, she said. I told you it wasn't her pa. Haven means a safe place, said Dorothy Ann. Ralphie saw another sign, yikes, an alligator crossing. Before the class could get a close look at the alligators, a large car pulled up and a woman got out. She was holding a leash with a giant tortoise on one, on one end. <clears throat> a tall man in a white suit, suit opened the front door. I want my tortoise toasted and stuffed just like the last one, the woman told her him. The class couldn't believe their ears. Toasted and stuffed? It sounds like that turtle is about to become somebody's dinner, Carlos cried. What if Liz is next, Phoebe wailed. If only we could get inside. Very funny, Miss Westlake. Wanda tried to get inside, but it didn't work. The man at the door pulled out a long scroll of paper. There is a list of requirements that must be met before entry is allowed. He said, body temperature, changeable. Sweat glands, none. Scales or skin, allowed. Hair, not allowed. So you see, I cannot let you in. Good day. He handed one to the list and shut the door with a loud bang. Back on the bus, the class examined the list. Body temperature, changeable? Arnold read, Carlos sighed. Well, that leaves us out, our temperatures stays mostly the same. That's why we're called warm-blooded, Keisha said. Tim looked thoughtful. Th then, is a reptile cold-blooded? All reptiles are cold-blooded, Miss Frizzle responded. 
cold-blooded, old-black-blooded, what we need is a plan. What we really need is a disguise. Ooh, what does that mean, do you think? A Trojan horse is a great idea. A horse isn't a reptile, but an alligator is. Dorothy Ann was reading a book. I got it, she cried. In ancient times, Greek soldiers built a huge wooden horse, and they hid inside it to fool their enemy. It was called a Trojan horse. I know, said Phoebe said. We can turn the bus into a Trojan alligator. Phoebe stood outside the bus. Miss Frizzle pulled a lever. Whoosh! Green smoke filled the air. When the smoke cleared, Phoebe saw that the bus had shrunk. It looked like a life-size alligator. It's a bus alligator now, Phoebe cried. Phoebe put a leash around the bus alligator and walked up to the front door. Man, this is what you call an inside job. Carlos. You think it's gonna work? The man in the white suit let Phoebe and the bus alligator in without a problem. What a splendid alligator, the man said. He grabbed the leash. I'll take her now. Um, I should go with her, Phoebe said. She doesn't like to be alone. Don't worry, the man said, leading the bus alligator away. We just love our cold-blooded critters to death. He, he left Phoebe all alone. Oh no, Phoebe mo moaned. He's going to toast and stuff the bus alligator just like that tortoise. From inside the bus alligator, we heard a loud splash. We did it, Wanda cried, we're in. But where exactly are we, Ralphie asked. We looked at the bus alligator's front windows. We were in a pool of water near a waterfall. An island filled with shade and plants just sat a few feet away. Around the bus alligator, all kinds of repti reptiles were crawling, including alligators. We're in hot water now. Burr, cold water, actually. Being in hot water is the same, meaning we're in trouble. How do we get out of here, Ralphie asked. We can't go out there, Arnold said nervously. There are real snakes and alligators crawling around. We can't find Liz by staying in here, Wanda put, pointed out. If we become reptiles ourselves, we can look for Liz without that guy in the white bothering us, Keisha suggested. Miss Frizzle smiled. Good thinking, Keisha. She walked over to a strange machine built into the bus. It was covered with buttons and flashing lights. Kids, meet the reptile later, said the Frizz. It'll turn us into reptiles in no time. Uh, Miss Frizzle, maybe I should stay behind and keep an eye on the bus again? I'll stay with you, Arnold. Miss Frizzle pulled a lever in a flash. We all turned into reptiles, except for Arnold and Dorothy Ann. Carlos was a speckled caiman. Let's see, where's Carlos? Carlos was a speckled caiman. Tim was a gecko. Keisha was a garter snake. Wanda was a chameleon. Miss Ralphie was a turtle, and Miss Frizzle was a frilled lizard. Lizard. I'm cold, Ralphie said, sticking his head into his shell. To get warm, we have to move to a warmer place, Carlos said. I, uh, let's try that heat lamp over there. Here's the heat lamp right here. We all crawled to the lamp. It's nice and warm here, Tim said. I guess to feel the heat, you have to find the heat. To, the, to a reptile, location is everything. Now we've got to locate Liz. Meanwhile, <clears throat> excuse me. Meanwhile, Phoebe was trying to find Liz on her own. She checked the kitchen just in case the man in the white, man, the man in the white was trying to cook Liz for dinner. Phoebe didn't find Liz, but she did find a weird menu. The lizard gets one meal a week? She couldn't, Phoebe couldn't believe what she was reading. And the alligators only get one meal a month? How inhumane, what kind of place is this? Please let there be no spaghetti and Liz balls on the meeting, or on the menu. I don't know why I said meeting. While Phoebe checked the kitchen, we crawled into the boiler room. It's, 
it really is boiling in here, Tim said. So how come I'm not sweating like I usually do when I'm hot? Sweat, gl um, sweat glands? None, Wanda said. That's what it said on the scroll. So I bet reptiles can't sweat to cool down. Ralphie stuck his head out of his shell. If you have to find heat to feel warm, maybe you have to find cool, cold to cool down. That's a good idea. Miss Frizzle pushed a water bucket towards us. Keisha slithered over to the bucket and stuck her tail in the cold water. Wow, I can feel my temperature dropping already, she explained. Everyone crawled toward the bucket, except for Wanda. We're more worried about staying the right temperature than we are about finding Liz, Wanda said. Aw, just when I was feeling comfy. Let's get moving! Back at the busigator, Arnold and Dorothy Ann were freezing. Let's move the busigator to where it's w w w warmer, Dorothy Ann chattered. But the bus wouldn't budge. Arnold and Dorothy Ann left the busigator and tried to push the heat lamp toward it. They didn't go far before Arnold noticed they were being followed by a swarm of reptiles. Maybe they're upset because we took their heat. Forget the heat, let's get back to the bus! After Miss Frizzle and we left the boiler room, we crawled into another room. It was cold, very cold. Reptiles were sleeping in glass drawers. A green lizard was curled up in one of them. It's Liz, she, everyone cried. She's barely breathing, Tim noticed. He should put her, hit, her head next to Liz's chest. I can't hear her heartbeat. Liz, snap out of it. What are we gonna do? Wake up, Liz, Wanda cried. Ralphie stared at Liz. She's not sleeping. It looks like she's frozen. There's one thing I don't get, Keisha said. It feels so cold. If it feels so cold, how come I'm not shivering? Reptiles can't shiver, Wanda said. Shivering is something just people do to get warm. When, when reptiles get really cold, their bodies just slow way down. I'm slowing down too. Slowing down? Isn't that like hibernation? Keisha asked. Exactly, said Miss Frizzle sleepily. We were getting sleepier and sleepier when Phoebe walked in. When did you guys become reptiles? She gasped. Wanda raised her head. Phoebe, unhibernate, Liz. Take her someplace warm. Phoebe grabbed Liz, Miss Frizzle, and the rest of the class in her arms. I'll save you all from this dangerous place, she said. Hibernation isn't dangerous, Phoebe. Think of it as a vacation. Phoebe raced out of the cold room. As she, warmed up, as she warmed up in Phoebe's arms, Liz began to wake up. Soon, we ran right into the busigator in the reptile habitat. Wanda looked inside the bus. Arnold, DA, get us out of here. We can't, Arnold said. The bus is so cold it stopped working. Ralphie groaned. If we don't get the bus moving, we could be reptiles for the rest of our lives. Maybe the bus is hibernated just like Liz was. <sighs> Liz jumped out of Phoebe's arms and crawled into a nearby heat lamp. A bunch of other reptiles were there too. Look at Liz, Carlos said. She doesn't look cold anymore. She looks happy. If we get the bus to where it's warmer, it'll start working again, Wanda said. I can do that, Phoebe said. We climbed into the bus and Phoebe pulled toward the lamp. You can do it, Phoebe. With Phoebe's help, we made it to the heat lamp. The busigator warmed up and pretty soon it was moving again. We followed Phoebe outside. We were free. Suddenly, a pile of nearby rocks started moving, but they weren't rocks, they were alligators. Do something, Miss Frizzle, Phoebe yelled. The frizz pulled some more levers and soon we were all turned back into kids again. The busigator changed back into the size of regular bus, 
but now it was a giant lizard. Phoebe climbed aboard. Ooh, it's kind of like a dinosaur dinosaur bus now. Dinosaur, a gator. Just as we were about to escape over the fence, the strange man in white came running after us. He carried something covered by a sheet. You forgot something, he said, pulling off the sheet. Liz's habitat, we cried. Miss Frizzle shook her, his head. Thanks, Harry. You know him, Phoebe asked. Harry Herps is one of the is the one who built Liz's habitat, said Miss Frizzle. It just needed a few repairs. It's a fun habitat. It's a little shower, little sun deck. I run her payment, Harry added. It's a luxury spa and restful resort for weary, worn out reptiles. So you weren't going to stuff Liz, Arnold asked. <laughs> Harry laughed hardly, but we did make sure she had enough to eat. It wasn't difficult because reptiles often go for weeks without eating. Miss Frizzle, why didn't you tell us this was a good place to be? Phoebe asked. The frizz smiled. I started to tell you, but I just love it when you figure things out for yourselves. Miss Frizzle. And that is that. Oh, Miss Frizzle wrote us a note. A note to parents, teachers, and kids. Warm-blooded creatures like me and you don't have to worry about regulating our own temperatures. Our bodies do it for us automatically. But if you were a cold-blooded reptile, or a creature such as a reptile, you'd need to move from place to place to keep yourself at the right temperature. <clears throat> Nothing makes a herp as happy as when the temperature's just right. Normally, cold-blooded animals do a pretty good job of staying at just the right temperature. But if for some reason it gets too cold around them, they can't move to a warmer place, they might bury themselves under leaves or find shelter underground, kind of like hibernating. How else are you to... Are you, how else are you different from a cold-blooded animal? Take another look at Harry Herp's list on page 10 to find some ways. Can you think of anything else that makes you different? All right, so Harry Herp's list said we had to have, does our body temperature change? It does. Do we sweat? We do, but reptiles don't. Do we have scales or skin? We have skin. And there's, and it says hair. Not allowed. So that means that reptiles don't have hair either, but we do. Now, for my writing extension, I would love it if you would write <clears throat> a couple sentences about a cold-blooded animal that you learned about and what you find most interesting. You can also list a couple other cold-blooded animals that you learned. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later.